everybody, my name is Sophia Malmberg and today I will be presenting my water cycle project. So first I will be telling you how I made my water cycle project. I didn't get these ideas from my head so I needed to google on YouTube until I found the perfect video and illustrations to um, make mine. So I found a video of this Asian guy who made a really cool uh, water project but I made some improvements instead. Um, I added for example a glowing sun and many other things but I'm not going to spoil them all for you so I won't tell you anything more. So first I needed to go to the garage to get layers of styrofoam, of the styrofoam for my base and then I had to glue these on top of each other, you can see. I also needed to, to use the styrofoam for my mountains here because I think that will make my mountains very sturdy and firm. So I kind of made them bumpy like it like it kind of weathered the rock because uh, it will take a very long time for the water to weather these rocks but it eventually did so now it's kind of bumpy and it's rocky because normally mountains are made of rocks so I also you might also be thinking how I managed to get some parts super smooth well I managed to get some parts super smooth because I used a special paste that I got from the store with my mom and dad. It was a painting and modeling store and it was really fun to put the white paste on. It's kind of like when you're smearing butter on bread, but it's a bit different. And that's how I managed to make my mountains smooth. Then I also painted my mountains with uh, some darker paint in some spots because some spots are darker and some point, spots are lighter gray. Normally they're gray. So that's how I made them. And also I had to use a carving knife to carve the mountains. And my daddy helped me a bit with that because otherwise my, the carving knife would spike me and I would get hurt. So I hope that's okay. And also... I will tell you now how I made my river. So I made my river by taking the carving knife again and carving a snaky shape kind of. So I had to like pick out the styrofoam from the flat base to make this. Um, and also I painted it a sandy color because it's kind of looking like sand because normally at the bottom of seas and rivers there's sand. I even added some sand here, like little drizzles and drops of sand. And I also had to stick the sand on because before it was eroding, when the water would pass through, it would carry the small sand balls with it into the sea. And the sea would be a big sand puddle and I wouldn't want that to happen. So I decided to glue them. And I also used the paste at the bottom of the river so I could seal it and, and like when water comes through styrofoam normally it goes through the tiny cracks. As you can see here maybe on the corner it's kind of like rough and if I would put water there it, was, it would come out. And that's actually what did happen when I first made my model, so we had to improve it by adding some paste and some special glue. I forgot the name, but I think it was some white glue. I think it was silicone. And that was also fun. And we had to wait for the silicone to dry, otherwise, you know, we would put the water with the silicone and it would mix up. So that's how I made my river and I also forgot one thing about my river. I also added some rocks to the river so sometimes um, when the you see this river especially is near some mountains so maybe some rocks from the mountains had accidentally slid down on into the river which is called 
um, erosion. Um, like I said with the sand earlier, it was being carried. But this one's not being carried because I had to glue them so it wouldn't be carried. Because otherwise the rocks will go into the sea as well. Which sometimes might happen. That's why there are some ro small rocks at the bottom of the sea. And that's how I made my river. And now I'll be telling you how I made my hill and how I managed to make it so round. So first I had to take the styrofoam, it's the same thing, but not, but before it was really pointy and like scruffy. So I had to use the paste again to make it rounder and I had to shape it with a knife so I can make it look like a rounding surface. And the paint, when you build up the paint on the pointy surface, you can add on the sides and it will be like a roundy surface more. And now, and that's how I made my mountains, I mean my hills, and now I'll be telling you about my grass, about how I made my grass. So, this doesn't look like paint to you, well that's because it isn't paint, well instead of paint it's grass powder, so I'll tell you what that is in a minute, but first let me tell you what happened. So first, I accidentally I mean, I not accidentally, but we went to the shop, we bought some really green paint. We didn't know it would be like that. We thought it was just like like green around the packaging and that's how it was supposed to be. But when we painted a tiny splodge right here, where this kitty is standing, um, it looked really weird and it wasn't really like real glass, grass, so we decided to change it. With this grass powder, which is also pretty soft, we used some glue to glue it and I really like how realistic it turned out to be and we even have some right here so you can see we have our lighter grass here our lighter colored grass and our darker colored grass so our lighter colored grass kind of more like a powder and the other one's more like a mat but normally um, grass would come out like um, a mat when you would get it like for example outside we have fake grass on our little balcony and it comes like a mat so like glue and you have to glue it down to the rocks but that's not how it is with this one we were thinking to get a mat at first but then how we managed to kind of get a straight mat over this round mountain that wouldn't work so we needed this powder instead and it was fun to sprinkle it on, like cupcake sprinkles, and we put this lighter one in some areas, like up here near these grassy bushes. So that's how I got my grass. I didn't make it, but I got it. And now I'll be telling you about how I got my trees to work and stand up. So we got our trees, I mean I got my trees, from the model shop so it's called a model shop because normally they would use these trees for like models like my model here so they would use it for like train models and different types but that's not our topic today so I'm not going to be telling you about those now I'm just saying for a little fact where I got them from and also we I mean also I took I mean also no a styrofoam is very easy to stick things into, like sharp things, like um, needles and uh, toothpicks, or different things that are pointy. So these, they're, they came like little stands, so at the bottom there's a sharp stand, so it can kind of cut through the styrofoam, and we have a little hatch here, so it's not actually glued, but there's a hatch for this little stand tree to stand up. and. Also, we had to cover it, you can also cover it with some grass bushes here, you can see, to make it look more realistic and so you don't show the stand. I also like these trees because they're really kind of like real leaves, they're very leafy and realistic, so that's very cool and I like that they're thin branches like on a normal tree. But yeah, so that's how I made my trees and in some of the parts near the near to the mountains the more foresty trees and shrubs there are but here they're like oak and birch trees because it's near a hill so now i'll be telling you about how i made 
these little flowers here. So these aren't fake flowers, these are actually real flowers. So I ripped them off of my mom's, my mom's plants, but first I asked her obviously, and I didn't actually rip the whole entire thing, like mad, but I just took tiny shrub pieces out because you can like take them out and then you can glue them onto the trees. Um, also about I will be telling you about these roots. So these aren't fake roots either. These are actually real roots here and here. And that's what makes it really cool. And I took them from my mom's plants, but they're actually weeds. So I took them from my mom's roses. This one, that one was from my mom's roses. And this one was from upstairs from another plant, weed plant. And anyways, we're allowed to take those because those are just going to kill her plants, which are not, which is not good. So. That's how I managed to take them. I also use these little pins to stick them into the ground. I didn't use glue um, because I think pins would be better. And I use these black pins to kind of camouflage with the underground black surface. And yeah, that's about the roots. And now I'll be telling you about my house and about my bridge. So my house here, ha I, I'll tell you why I picked these colors. Well. I picked these colors because normally in in the north of Sweden they would have these kind of houses and my grandma and grandpa they live there with their dog Arvid and it's really nice there but it's also really cold there and they paint these kind of houses in these colors and sometimes they might get like white houses even but I but since mine's like a small wood cabin I decided to pick these kind of colors and that's why I picked these colors and I also made this bridge which was really frustrating to make because I had to use these tiny toothpick thingies, the tops of toothpicks or bottoms, doesn't even matter. And I had to glue them onto this bridge and that was really hard because I had to glue them and if one would fall down I would need to restart the whole bridge because um, then Otherwise, it wouldn't work out. And also, yeah, my daddy helped me with like a few of them. And he also gave me this idea to look on Google to find how to bend this wood. And that's what I'm going to tell you about. So I looked on Google and I found that if you soak this wood, it's very soft wood. I'll tell you about what wood it is and about the house a bit more later. But first, I'll tell you how I soaked it. So I soaked it in the water and it's very easy to bend then, but it's also very um, delicate, especially when it's soaked. Um, so you need to be really careful with that. And especially these thin shards here were also really frustrating to make. And I also painted this with regular black paint. That's my bridge. I didn't glue my bridge, but I glued my house. And now I'll be telling you about my house chimney. So, um, I was, I made my house chimney by cutting the, uh, by cutting the wood, special wood, and shaping it and carving it kind of into a chimney. And I glued it on. First I was thinking to go for a brick design, but then that would be too much. So instead I decided to make it plain gray with a marker. But the rest I did with paint, except for this chimney. And also I will tell you one last thing about this wood. So this wood is actually called um, balsa wood. It's kind of something like balsam wood for the like balsam you put on your skin. First I thought it was wood that you get balsam from, but that's not the case because it's not even called balsam. So I'm just telling you. So yeah, we picked these wood because, this wood because it's really soft and it's easy to cut with scissors and knives. And also it's easy to carve into. We also didn't buy this house. We had to glue the floors. I mean, no floors. We had to do the walls. We made a little floor here to make it look more natural. Same with the roof. And yeah, because I think we didn't use regular hardwood. First of all, that has like small cracks in between, which would be hard to paint. Second of all, that wood would be way too um, heavy for the, this type of glue to hold it. And third of all, it's 
would be kind of hard to cut into. So if you drop it on your foot by accident, it will really hurt your foot, but this wood will not hurt your foot or anything that you drop it on. And anyway, that's enough news for foot. Now I'm gonna be telling you about how I made my clouds. So I made my clouds by, um, I mean with soft foam, with like, yeah, soft foam, so I could, it's kind of looking like fluffy, and it's easy to carve into. I found it from my TV, actually, not from my TV, actually, from the TV that it used to be wrapped in. It's not, I think it wasn't wrapped in like regular ones because TV glass is pretty delicate. And also, um, yeah. And at first I was actually thinking to make it out of cotton balls, like the fluffy balls. I think you know what they are. Um, but those wouldn't really work out for my type of design because they wouldn't be sturdy and firm enough for like water to pass through. But I'm not going to tell you anything more about that because then I'd be spoiling the surprise again. So, and yeah. So that's how I made my clouds. I also um, carved them into like cloudy and shapes and also I made them bumpy and fluffy looking. I also, you can see I painted the dark cloud a bit so it looks like an angry grumpy cloud. Um, and also they're easy to stick toothpicks into and different wires and things. But wait, I'm sorry, I'm surprised. So I shouldn't tell you anything more. And um, also I have on my blue background, it's just a plain blue background that I made with acrylic paint out of this box is actually I think my mom's clothing box that she got her clothes from from her shop and also um, behind I also painted some clouds which weren't going to be fit for my type of design uh, so I just left them there I didn't raise them or anything and I just put these clouds over so like when you look on the side it's not looking like there's only one cloud and it's more interesting also now I'll be telling you about my about how I made my signs so I like my signs a lot and where I place them because I think it's kind of like a sign treasure hunt because each of them are in different places some are stuck the trees some are on not some are on toothpicks, some aren't on toothpicks, they're on jiggly surfaces, some are even stuck to the clouds, which is super cool. And I think the signs are probably the easiest thing for me to make because, well, I mean, you just need um, a toothpick and you. I decided to go for this overly kind of shape, not the pointy shape, um, to, um, kind of like shape them, so that's how I shape them. I also had to use white carver because unfortunately these signs, um, they're translucent and I'm going to show you my printer. It's here. So first you can switch it on, then you can type, then you can print, and then you can cut. So that's how I made them. And there are only a few signs, so that was really easy to just type them down. And then I had stuck them with the toothpicks in the set, but remember, not all of them are stuck toothpicks. So one I stuck just a sticker into the ground without the cardboard layer behind, only the thin one, which is white. This one, I, for example, stuck it with cardboard behind and a toothpick. So it's only white on one side, because on the other side, we don't need it to be white, because that's not the main point where we're going to be showing it. Where I'm going to be showing it to you. So yeah, and with these evaporations, it's one of my favorite probably because I have these little dandy blue pipe cleaners and I use the cardboard behind right here and then I have my white um, layer of thin cardboard. It's white and I also typed it down there and also it's really fun and wriggly. And the ones I even broke one of these arrows by accident, but it's still very easy to fix because you can just put the arrow inside. And now I will be showing you my condensation one. So this one stuck to the cloud, and there's also precipitation that stuck to the cloud, but I'm not telling you about my signs now. So, and now I'll be telling 
And also, this cat here is specially for Miss Roberts and Sophia Davids because Sophia Davids likes cats and Miss Roberts has cats, three of them. And um, I also put this little doggy here, um, a Dalmatian, just because I like dogs and also I found it. So I decided to add some animals um, because that's what I had. And yeah, now I'm going to be telling you about what a water cycle is.